Well, Philippine offshore gaming operators or POGOs are the single biggest source of office space demand in the country in 2019. What's next for the China-led POGOs with a China travel ban in place? With us now for more from our Rockwell studio is David Li Chu, co-founder and chief executive of Li Chu Property Consultants. Good morning and thanks for joining us, David. Welcome to the program. Uh, good morning and thank you for having me. Now, two months into the outbreak and weeks into the travel bans, do you see the virus disruption taking hold in the property sector here in the Philippines? Yeah, I don't think uh, it's had any meaningful effect to the property market today, although we're very concerned about how this will blossom and flourish in other countries and how that will impact travel to the Philippines. Uh, I'd like to think that the virus has done a lot more to slow down the growth in Pogo, since it's the topic today, than any other uh, factor in, uh, in the Philippines. Now, um, if this virus continues to bloom for the next six months, and while we only have three or four cases here in the Philippines on shore, if that blossoms to a significant number, then what we see in many countries will happen to the Philippines and that will probably be quite, quite a, a, a meaningful event for Philippines. Right. Uh, is the threat of the cancellation of passports of thousands of Chinese nationals suspected of illegal activities in Pogos a potentially bigger threat to the property sector than the virus disruption? I think I think not. The, the incidents of these passport cancellations are still fairly limited. It looks alarming because of the scale of these events, but in proportion to the amount of workers that are here, it's still very small. Uh, the travel ban is probably the ones that are right now restraining the Pogo sector from growing. So 230,000 to 260,000 square meters of office space were taken down and leased between October of last year till about the first couple of weeks of January of this year. All that space is about to be, it's right now being fitted out and they are supposed to open for business sometime in March or April. If this travel ban persists and the, these operators open their office space without being able to hire and populate these um, these seats and these office spaces, then, then that, would be, uh, that would add stress to the system. And so will that immediately produce a hard la landing? I don't think so. I think because of the amount of deposits that these POGOs have paid landlords, many landlords have a six to nine month buffer to be able to ride out any vacancies that they will experience in, uh, in the next six to nine months. Right. Uh, and at that time, mm -hmm. and at that time, towards August of this year, so six months from now will be August of this year, that's when the BPO sector takes up the most amount of space from August to December. And I think the BPO sector will start picking up significantly towards the year end and make up for the shortfall that Pogo will leave behind. Right. Uh, so, but for the first six months, six to nine months of the year, do you see any drop? in demand for space. You did mention some office spaces. What about residential or leisure? So there's a, if, if the Pogo sector occupies 1.8 million square meters of office space, there's probably almost an equivalent number, more or less, in residential space. And yes, that will suffer uh, the, probably the most because they are paying significant amounts of rent into the system. The rents are artificially high in the residential sector today across many asset classes because of the POGO sector and that's going to normalize. But then even if it normalizes, they're still giving landlords yield of middle to high single digit numbers. Whereas the POGO sector is offering these landlords double digit, uh, mid double digit returns. So that's going to normalize to maybe about 7% return. Uh, the vacancies will rise but then you have to consider also that most of the residential sector is retail driven and not institutional driven, meaning the landlords are families or individuals that can sit out uh, a long 
a long vacancy period. Right. So at the end of the year, what are we looking at here? Is the, are we looking at a flat or a positive growth for uh, spaces uh, due to POGOs? It really depends on how this virus turns up for Philippines. You know, then, you know there, there are two... Some people are saying the summer is going to... You know, like, like Trump was quoted the other time, that when summer comes in or when it gets warmer, this thing will, will become less of a problem. I don't know if that's the case, but if it is the case, then we think that it's, it's, you know, we're going to have a short dip in, the, in rents because of the absence of Pogo, but, the, but it will have a very strong bounce back towards the year end. Now, what about in terms if it of... Becomes, if it becomes a pandemic, then that's a very different situation because that's going to affect so many parts of society. What about in terms of location, Manila or Cebu or other major areas in the country? Where would you expect to slow down? I think the biggest slowdown will be in Metro Manila because that's the highest concentration. Yeah. If I could say, though, this virus has done many things for the, for the world, right? Many bad things to the world. But there's also many things to... And, and while the Philippines has a lot to worry about, there's so much bad news today, let me give some maybe light at the end of the tunnel, which is this virus has almost pushed many countries into the edge of recession. And while many countries are going through that, companies are now thinking, how else are they going to grow the bottom line and protect the bottom line? And the only way they're going to do that, given this situation, is to continue to offshore to four cities. That's Bangalore in India, and then Manila, Cebu, and Clark in Philippines. And so I think while we see a softening of the Pogo demand across the country because of different reasons, several reasons, the BPO sector is going to rapidly ramp up uh, sometime in the second half of this year because of all the problems that the West is going through because of this virus. Right. Uh, well, we also hear reports that, uh, you know, Carlo Negrales, for example, cabinet secretary, is seeing some remittances to slow down by 0.8 percent because of the virus disruption. But some analysts don't see the virus disruption lingering for the remainder of the year. Do you see any factors in the property sector that might pick up the slack from the outbreak, apart from the BPO uh, industry growth? What about the REIT market or perhaps the lower interest rate environment? What are the other opportunities for growth in property? Yeah, I think this virus and the way it's impacted stock markets around the world has, has dramatically impacted sentiment. So it's brought in so much negative sentiment in the stock market that many companies will probably wait things out until valuations normalize. All right. Uh, it seems uh, still wait and see mode for the meantime. Thank you so much for sharing your thoughts with us, David Lee Chu of Lee Chu Property Consultants. Thank you.